When talking about a pair of pants, it's easy to guess what comes to mind. Jeans. And when it comes to jeans, nothing beats Levi's. Levi's is more than just an institution in the field, with a century and a half of history behind it. It may be regarded as one of the unspoken emblems of contemporary Western society, a true modern-day legend. Remember that those blue jeans, that denim worn with such indifference, have a tale behind them and deserve the most respect every time your attire indicates a moment of tremendous focus. If you want to know about this tale of Levi Strauss, let's go back in history when the Levi's jeans first came to be. So stay tuned. This little introduction is required to begin narrating the finest moments of a brand that now has 148 candles on its birthday cake. Its ambassadors are a history of memorable accomplishments, amazing goods, and colossal superstars. But let's start with the basics. Levi Strauss, the originator of all this, was born on February 26, 1829 in Bodenheim, Bavaria to Hirsch Strauss and his second wife, Rebecca Haas Strauss. Levi was from a large family with three additional brothers and two elder sisters. This close bond prompted him to go to New York with his sisters two years after his father's death in 1846. His brothers established a dry goods business there, selling textiles, ready-to-wear clothing, and items such as perfumes and soaps. J. Strauss' brother and co. was the first name of the New York-based family firm at the time. Levi quickly realizes what his path is, trading. For this reason, in 1853, he relocated to San Francisco during the heated years of the California Gold Rush and chose to establish a branch of his brother's business on the West Coast, changing the name to Levi Strauss & Co. The encounter with Jacob Davis, one of Reno Taylor's NV, is the true turning point in this long, daunting procedure. In 1872, an unknown genius from Nevada approached Mr. Strauss about patenting his invention. His objective, which is now taken for granted, was to place traditional rivets and classic denim work pants in places where they may have ripped more readily. The requirement, or at least the most urgent one, was to make them even more resistant in order for them to endure as long as possible. All of this reacted to a basic but extremely essential desire of the American working class who compromised the majority of the population. Only a minor and virtually unnoticeable change was required to add the missing component to the pot. The verdict is in, and the rest is history. What should be noted, and this is not an insignificant point, is that no new cuts or new fits are created for what was formerly known as waste overalls it was simply an improvement. Finally, on May 20, 1873, the United States Patent and Trademark Office sent the patent number 139121. This is the date of birth of the fabled blue jeans, which now have a lengthy history to tell. Let's take a step back in time to examine how denim was truly created. This will help us comprehend and recognize the many alterations that occurred subsequently. It was first exhibited with only one back pocket with a historical arcuate stitching, the meaning of which remains unknown, given that an earthquake in 1906 completely destroyed Levi's headquarters in San Francisco. The watch pocket and crotch rivet, the buttons for the braces, and the back buckle are the major characteristics of these original jeans, which were created in Manchester, New Hampshire, using a double X blue denim of 9 ounce and eventually released in San Francisco. For fans of the company, the year 1886 will always be remembered as the first time the leather patch with the two horses was utilized, a utilitarian notion at the heart of everything. Levi's is not the only brand that uses rivets in 1890. As a result, it was decided to create lot numbers, such as the 501, waist overalls with copper rivets, where the number 5 denoted higher quality compared to other lots, such as 201. Fashion and customers must evolve as time passes. Ellis & Co. does not sit still. Another pocket is added to the rear in 1901. 
Belt loops are added in 1922, and the Californian Corporation decides to buy denim only from Cone Mills in Greensboro, North California, as it has done since 1912. If Levi satisfied all women's wants in 1943, the Lady Levi's added another tassel to this creative process in 1936. We're definitely referring to the historical red label on the back pocket with Levi's emblem embroidered in white in capital letters. This is the only important detail to comprehend if you're looking at a pair of genuine Levi's vintage. Later, even the iconic rivets which had given these pants their appeal became less practical. In 1937, it was decided to place them behind the rear pockets. Many were the critics at the time who were moaning about spoiling the saddles and furniture. But for others, what was positioned at the end of the crotch of the pants was the worst. So much to be removed since it would catch fire if it was exposed to fire. The years following World War II played a significant role in the formation of Levi's history. 1947 marks the beginning of the 501 as we know it with the removal of the buckle and buttons for the braces. On the pocket, the arcuate stitching was made of double thread and made a little diamond. The fit is also somewhat slimmer. There is a large number of films in which performers wore Levi's jeans, including Star Wars' Mark Hamill, Marlon Brando's The Wild One, Back to the Future's Michael J. Fox, Brokeback Mountain's Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal, Mike Myers and Dana Carvey from Wayne's World, Peter Fonda from Easy Riders, and the whole sisterhood of the Traveling Pants cast. Long has passed since 1966 when the first television commercial for these jeans aired. Following that, the manner in which advertisements were created altered as well in response to changing moods and new trends expressing the will of decades of traditions with varying styles and tastes. In 1986, the year of the first Levi's ads in Europe, the notion of public acclaim was centered on a quintessentially 1980s concept, beauty first and foremost. Beginning with Nick Kamen, all the appealing leads in Levi's commercials, wearing the Levi's and a lot of great 50s music served as the brand ambassadors throughout that time. In this situation, the 1990s reset everything. Advertising has become identified with avant-garde and modernity. We hope you found it interesting to travel back in time with us on this quick tour into the history of a brand that is a part of everyone's life, Levi's. Do you think that success comes from a mix of hard work, determination, and passion? Also, how long have you been wearing Levi's? Well, let us know in the comments section below. If you want more stories like this, show us your support by giving us a like, subscribe, and by ringing that notification bell to stay updated. Thank you for watching till the end.